Approach to a patient with first-time seizure. Seizures are common, and nearly 1 in 10 people will experience one in their lifetime. They account for up to 1-2% to of all ED visits, many for a first-time seizure. To arm you with a better understanding of the initial approach to a first-time seizure, let's consider a case. A previously healthy 24-year-old woman presents to the ED after a witnessed episode of loss of consciousness with associated full-body convulsions. Exam is remarkable for lateral tongue lacerations and confusion. Questions a healthcare provider should consider when approaching a patient with a suspected first-time seizure include, was this an epileptic seizure? Was it focal onset or generalized? Was it provoked? And would the patient benefit from pharmacologic treatment to prevent future seizures? An epileptic seizure is a transient occurrence of signs and or symptoms due to excessive or synchronous neuronal activity in the brain. To determine whether an event was an epileptic seizure, it should be differentiated from common non-epileptic mimics such as syncope, transient ischemic attack, and psychogenic non-epileptic seizure, or PNES. Supportive signs and symptoms for epileptic seizure include a brief episode, usually less than 90 seconds, with loss of consciousness, body stiffening or rhythmic jerking, abnormal respirations, incontinence, staring, and or lateral tongue biting, commonly followed by post-seizure or post-ictal confusion or fatigue. It is important to note, however, that these symptoms may be seen with non-epileptic spells. If you suspect an epileptic seizure, the next question is regarding seizure type. Focal onset, previously termed partial, or generalized. Focal onset seizures originate in one small area or hemisphere of the brain, but may then spread to both hemispheres in what is known as secondary generalization. In contrast, generalized onset seizures involve both brain hemispheres at onset. A good description from a witness, especially of how the seizure began, is key to differentiating focal onset and generalized seizures. The next question is whether the seizure was provoked, meaning it had a secondary cause. Common causes include metabolic derangements, substance use or withdrawal, and medications. A thorough clinical history is critical, as is basic laboratory testing, including CBC, CMP, infectious studies, and toxicology screen as indicated. In the setting of a provoked seizure with an identified cause, management may be best directed at the primary cause before initiating anti-seizure medications, or ASMs. If you determine the seizure was unprovoked, the decision to begin an anti-seizure medication hinges on risk of recurrence. Advanced tests such as electroencephalogram or EEG and brain MRI can inform this risk. Up to 50% of EEGs performed within the first two days of an unprovoked first seizure will capture underlying epileptiform abnormalities. MRI primarily looks for predisposing structural abnormalities and is critical in suspected focal onset seizures. Generally, a patient with one unprovoked seizure, normal EEG, and normal MRI does not require anti-seizure medication treatment. Seizure recurrence risk is increased with prior brain injury or insult, abnormal EEG, abnormal imaging, or nocturnal seizure. Choice of anti-seizure medication depends on seizure type, focal or generalized, and individual medication side effects. Overall, anti-seizure medication treatment strategy involves shared decision-making between clinician and patient and family after a discussion of risks and benefits. Let's apply this approach to our patient. The characteristics of our patient's events are indeed suggestive of an epileptic seizure, especially the highly specific lateral tongue lacerations. Abrupt loss of consciousness with full body convulsions suggests generalized onset, and normal laboratory workup suggests it was unprovoked. EEG and brain MRI were normal. Accordingly, her likelihood of seizure recurrence is low, the patient did not wish to pursue ASM treatment at this time, but was informed of appropriate seizure precautions, such as avoiding heights and swimming unaccompanied, as well as driving restrictions, which vary from state to state. For more information about this and other neurologic conditions, please visit 
aan.com slash neurobytes.